All right, how's everybody doing? Hopefully everybody's doing great. I am Pete from SoCal Travel Ball. Uh, I wanted to go over a couple of fundamentals in the game of baseball. It also applies to softball because this is uh, something that's universal. Actually, um, the first week that I did the SoCal Travel Ball's weekly roundup, the first place team that took it was the SoCal Sluggers, which was actually a, an eight-year-old um, softball um, team that they did a relay play where the ball went to the center fielder. They hit the relay, the relay threw it to the catcher, and then there was a, a, a play that was made at the plate for the final out to win the championship. I love fundamentals. Um, I was really impressed that these eight-year-old uh, softballers were executing uh, some of the fundamentals. Um, even though it was slightly incorrect, but, you know, that's what I want to talk about here because at the end of the day, I want to say that the hardest teams to beat are the teams that are fundamentally sound. Teams that are fundament uh, that are strong in their fundamentals come up with plays that you, as an opponent, become impressed. You're like, oh, wow. And it's not, it doesn't just happen overnight, and it's not just by accident that they are fundamentally sound. You have to give credit to the coaches, to the organization that they come from, because that just uh, is a good reflection of the type of coaching, the level of, of intensity and uh, education that they're giving them. Um, but yeah, so one of the things I want to talk about is the relay play. I had it all set up right here. I'm going to try to do it on Zoom. I'm going to see if it works. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, but let's give it a shot. So I have to share my screen. Here's my screen. I don't need sound. And there it is. I'm hoping that it is recording a page that says the relay, because that is what we are going to talk about. And I'm going to fix my image where it would be good. I'm going to put it right there. All right. So here I have a clean slate of a, of a baseball field. I'm going to switch to inking mode. I, I haven't used this before. I'm just trying it out for the first time. Okay, it works. And now there's an undo button right there. All right. So we're going to say that there's a runner on second. We're going to put him here, leading off slightly. Um, you know, the coach is here. Coach is telling them, has already signaled, you know what? You're thinking four all the way. You're not thinking three. You're not thinking station to station. I want you to think two steps ahead. Maybe this is the winning run, maybe whatever. You should always be thinking that anyways. Any ball hit off the bat, you should be thinking that you're going to touch four, not just get to third. You should be thinking way ahead. So I'm sure he, already, he or she already told the runner, you know what? You're scoring on a single. You're scoring on a single. That doesn't mean you're going to score because it could be that maybe the ball was hit so hard and then you're thinking of scoring. You're coming in, circling the base. The coach maybe drops down here and sees that it's a clean pick by the left fielder. Left fielder picks the ball. And, you know, maybe it's a one hopper. It goes one and into the glove. And maybe in this case, as soon as you know, the runner circles the base. The coach is going to throw out the stop sign and say, stop and go back. And you go back to the bag, right? And you end up staying right here in third. Obviously, that's what the coaches are for. But your mentality, the bubble in your head that should be popping up is you should be thinking four all the way. I'm going to score. I'm going to get dirty. I'm going to slide. Doesn't matter. I'm going to get there. I'm going to touch home plate. I'm going to score. That's got to be your thinking. But we're not thinking – this topic is not necessarily um, – I'm not basing this topic on, you know what, your mentality as a runner on second. I'm focusing here on the relay to the plate on, a, on an out. So here's a catcher. We're going to assume now that the ball – I'm going to – let me just draw out my outfielders. I'm going to have my left fielders. They're playing deep, but maybe this guy's a little deeper than he should. Maybe this one's a little bit deeper too, but 
for whatever reason, they're deep and they have cannons and they they think they can handle it. So they're positioned correctly. So here you have a shortstop. Here you have a third baseman. You got the pitcher and you got the catcher. Okay, and you got a runner here and then you got the hitter. All right, so the hitter comes up to bat, hits a base hit, you know, nice and easy line drive, maybe a slap single. This runner is thinking four all the way. So we're, we're going to assume that this runner is going to go all the way to try to score, okay? Now, what has to happen here? What does everybody have to do? What does this guy have to do? What does this guy have to do? What does this person have to do? Okay? Everybody has to do something. They has to go somewhere. You know, this, the third baseman has to come back over here. Catcher should be expecting. All right. One of the things that I have been seeing um, is that our pitchers are not running to where they're supposed to be. They, in this situation, balls hit to right field. Right fielder is going to throw a laser to the catcher. I'm not seeing pitchers run to where they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be back here. You can see it in the MLB. You have to draw this imaginary line from wherever the ball goes, and then the pitcher should be directly behind the catcher in case the throw goes over the catcher. The pitcher will be there to back it up. I'm not seeing that. What I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing the pitcher hang around right here, throw their hands up in the air, get the relay, and then, you know, try try get the relay at home or they cut the ball off and then they throw the second to try to get the hitter advancing you know what that's awesome that outs are being made but let's talk about what really should be happening the first baseman should be dropping down around this area right here throwing the hands up while the pitcher has gone to back up the catcher the pitcher is there to recover any bad throw, any drop ball the catcher, um, you know, if the catcher boots the ball. We want our first baseman to be in this area with the hands up. The shortstop should be here in case you need a double cut, right? In case the ball got by the outfielder and the outfielder had to chase. Now with the back to home plate, you know, it's not going to be such an easy throw to hit the relay here. So... The relay has to be the first one, right? It'll be the, the second baseman here. And maybe from here, the second baseman can bypass the first baseman and throw it home if a place to be made at home. Or they can cut it and redirect it to the, to the out at second or redirect it to the out at third. But what I want to point out is that the pitcher should know automatically where they're supposed to be. In this play, in this situation, it should be automatic that the runner sprints and runs behind. There's no time for pouting. There's no time for like, oh, let me throw my glove to the ground because I'm upset because they got a shot off of me. No. The fundamentals stay in play. Pitcher automatically just puts his head down and runs as fast as they can behind the catcher to be ready to, to back up the play because that's that's – that's what the play is going to call for. Now, let's pretend um, that this red line that's going to right field, right now I have it as a ground ball, but let's say this, this red line, instead of it being, uh, let me see, let me delete it. Okay, so instead of this red line being a, a ground ball, let's say this, ground, this ball to right field was actually a fly ball, and it's going to get caught by the right fielder. All right, I'm going to change the color back. Now, Pitcher should anticipate what's happening. The runner knows what he's going to do. He's, um, he or she's going to stay close to the bag. You know, if they think early ahead of time, you know what, that's deep enough. I'm going to get on the bag. They're going to get on the bag and just wait for the catch to tag up. Pitcher should know, okay, it's a fly ball that's not going to drop. Most likely my right fielder is going to catch it. Pitcher should go back here. Now the pitcher should be behind the third baseman. Third baseman gets on the bag. Right, and the pitcher should be back here. Shortstop will be in the vicinity in case there is a throw. 
we get the relay. If the runner change, changes their mind here and decides to go back, well, the shortstop is going to cut it off, redirect the ball back to the second baseman, who's going to be right there to make the out on the, on the runner who stopped, changed their mind because of the good throw. Shortstop intercepts it, throws it back to the second baseman. Boom, and we get the out here at second. Um, we just have to have the, pe the, the right people, the right pieces go to the right place. You know, that's great that the pitcher is the most, most athletic one and probably the most heads up one, but it's time for this first baseman to get in the game and start figuring out what they have to do. It's time for the corners to know when it's their turn to um, back up the plays. Okay, uh, another play that's very common that, you know, first baseman will fall asleep on that I've been noticing is they will not. Why is it not writing? Give me a second. Let's go back to black. All right, so there we go. All right, so now you have a ball that is going to be hit to center field. It's a ground ball up the middle. Runners thinking four all the way, as I mentioned before. Now, again, the pitcher, again, where's the play? The play's at center. The, I mean, the ball's hit to center. The pitcher needs to run and become the backup to the catcher. This got to be the positioning of the pitcher so that the pitcher is ready to take the backup in case the catcher misses the ball or bobbles it or ball goes over the head. The, the pitcher needs to be behind. I drew the circle a little bit too close to the catcher right there. I wouldn't recommend being so close. I would say to try to be, try to get enough space as possible right there. Um, so you can, if you're right next to the catcher, he's going to miss it. You're going to miss it. But the missing component is this. First baseman should be in line. I mean, I don't care that that's the slowest guy on the team. That person needs to put their head down and they need to run for their life like a dog is chasing them and is about to bite them in the butt. And they need to run as fast as they can to be in line so that they can cut this off and throw it here or cut it off and redirect it back to second to, to try to cut off the hitter that's trying to go for two on the throw. First baseman needs to be there. First baseman needs to drop down when two things happen. When the ball is hit to this guy or this girl over here, this guy or this girl over here. First baseman drops down in this area for the right fielder, drops down to this area when it's the center fielder. When the ball's hit to the left fielder, we're going to have third baseman drop down this area, hands up, shortstop will go here, hands up. And now this is a pretty far throw. So if this person has a strong arm, they could reach it all the way. But if not, you're going to hit the second cutoff. The job of the shortstop is to automatically detect when they're being skipped. The moment that the left fielder has decided to skip the first cutoff and goes to the second, this shortstop now needs to run for their life like a dog is chasing them. Pit bull, we're going to see a pit bull's chasing them, and they're about to get bit, and they need to run for their life to get to third base. Just in case this runner redirects, puts the break because the coach dropped down over here and said, stop, it's a good throw or whatever, get back. The runner stops and goes back. Well, guess who's going to be there? It's going to be our shortstop who has gone from here to here to then sprinting here. The ball goes here. If my third baseman is in the right place, they can cut it off. And then a third base, I mean, the runner that is, re, that is retreating back to third, I can catch it. And now throw it back to the third baseman and you catch him leaning the wrong way. Obviously, if the runner continues on their path to home plate, the third baseman will now cut it off, do a little uh, half turn, and throw a strike to the catcher. And where is the pitcher? Not here, because this would not be a straight line, right? The pitcher would need to be right around over here. Because in geometry, the quickest, the quickest path from point A to point B is in a straight line. So we are not going to go in a direction where the pitcher is in the wrong spot because the, the ball is not going to travel like that unless it ricochets. The ball will most likely, if it's missed or overthrown, it's going to go in this general 
area and the pitcher will be there to protect any other runners from advancing. But um, I don't know, that is the idea of a relay. I could show some videos from some of the videos that have been sent so you guys cannot redirect. I did um, mention some of them that are like, you know, top plays that I selected. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys uh, what those top plays look like. And, you know, that way you can see what I'm talking about when, when we see um, a pitcher participating in the relay. You know, part, that just means that the, if the pitcher participated in the relay and made something happen, you know, that's cool. But let's just know that the pitcher should not be the one here getting the cutoffs. In the higher divisions, you know, once you get to college and pros, even high school, you know, they're they're – you're not going to see a pitcher taking that because you got to have the right people and you got to protect your pitchers. Basically, the pitcher should, should not be the ones uh, making those plays happen. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to try and look for some videos that I have that that have been submitted, and you know I'll show some where there's plays at the plate and the pitcher goes to the right place. Maybe a play didn't happen, but the pitcher was in the right place, and then I'll show you uh, examples of where pitchers were not in the right place. They made something happen, but they were not in the right place. But I'm just going to say that the teams with the strongest fundamentals are usually the hardest teams to beat because they're doing all the little things correctly. And little by little, all of these different weapons, they add up because they sort of build a strong defensive uh, uh, force field against the offense that tries to attack the defense is well-rounded, well-coached, well-educated, and knowledgeable. They are going to be the, the ones who are able to anticipate. They are going to be the ones who are able to determine where to go next. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. For example, a third baseman, like just being heads up, a third baseman fielding a ground ball, sprinting to third base, touching the bag, and then throwing a first base when you got runners on first and second. That's like a heads up play that, you know, it doesn't just happen overnight. That player has to be coached, has to be taught that, has to learn that. Those are like little things that I think that need to need to be taught. Um, but the relay is one of them. The relay, I, I get super impressed when I see it. I used to play outf outf uh, outfield in high school. So I get really impressed when, it, when I see a team do it correctly at a very young age, that they know how to cover their positions and where they're supposed to be. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to tap into the other videos so you guys can see the examples. All right, let's take a look at some fundamentals here. We have the red team. I believe it's the Angels. There's a ball hit to right. Look at the pitcher. The pitcher breaks to third base because she anticipates that a triple's coming. The first baseman decides, okay, I'm going to get in this play. She overruns her line because the throws at home, but the important part is that she knew that she had to be somewhere. She ran. She was slightly to the left. She should have been a little more to the right, but she ran in to try to do her job. Now here you have a kid hitting at the right field. You got a runner at second trying to tag up. He sees the ball's going to bounce, and he's going to come home. The pitcher's looking at the play. Now the pitcher says, oh, there's a play at the plate. I better break home. I'm going to um, – let's see if I can rewind that. Now you got a, a hitter. Hitting it to left field. I'll play it again right now so you can see. You got the pitcher covering third now because she sees there's a play at third. She moves to the right. Okay, I got to get in the line. Maybe it's a little more to the left. Okay, nothing to do in right there. It's a triple. But look how everybody is participating. One more time. You're going to see the ball hit to right field. Check out what the pitcher does. She goes to, she knows that it's a triple. So she goes to back up to third baseman. She falls out of the picture. We don't see her. First baseman comes into, into play. She overruns her line slightly. And throw comes to home on a one hop. That's a pretty good throw, actually. Um, gives it back to the first baseman, waits for the pitcher. Now here you have the pitcher. You're going to see him run to back up the catcher. I do not think a throw is made to home. Um, the throw is probably made to second. And the catcher slams his helmet. I just saw that. Here comes the pitcher to back up the catcher. Run comes in without a throw. This one, you see the pitcher. She's going to get to a position where she can help. She's going to back up the third baseman in case there's a bad throw. But luckily, there was a perfect throw. And it doesn't look like they get her. She says, it's a stand-up triple. Throw comes in. She says, all right, 
And that's pretty much it, folks. Hopefully you learned something from watching these videos today. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other examples that your coach can talk.